Hey guys, today I am going to talk to a Guinness World Record holder for memory and I'm going to ask him about does IQ play a role in memory and what makes the brains of memory champions so special? But before I ask Boris Conrad this question, I want to tell you a little bit about who Boris is. He is a four-time Guinness World Record holder for memory. Uh, he's memorized 201 names in 15 minutes. He's memorized 280 words in 15 minutes before. He has placed number one at the World Memory Championships in disciplines such as names and faces and random words. His team from Germany has won the overall team competition at the World Memory Championships. You might have seen Boris on shows like The Brain or Got Talent. This guy is also a neuroscientist a super smart guy who's dedicated his life to not only researching the brain, but he competes in memory tournaments and does really well. He speaks at events worldwide and uh, borisconrad.com, the link to his website's below. So here is my question for Boris. When people ask me, you know, I've, I've been speaking on memory a long time. People always ask me, you know, is, is there anything special about you? And to somebody like you, Boris, or, or Ben Pridmore, or you know, any of, or, or Grunther, they would look at me and they'd be like, no, there's nothing special about Ron. <laughs> but, you know, to the average person in my memory speeches, they think there is. And so I, I'll say, no, you know, there's not. But it's always the hardest thing that I have to convince somebody of that that there's nothing special about the way I memorize, even, you know, at the level that I'm at. But then I always reply. I say, you know, I don't think there is anything special about my brain and how I memorize and, and the speed of it. Then I'll tell them, you know, there are these guys out in the world like Boris or, or Ben Pridmore or, or, or Nelson Dallas, and they're going so fast. And even though I know they're compressing the more than me, in other words, maybe they're memorizing nine digits at a time and I'm doing six or something like that, I still feel like there's something different there. Do you think, I mean, is there any any uh, accuracy to say that maybe your brain does go a little bit faster than mine? <laughs> um, so how do I say that politely? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, want, I don't care about polite, man. I don't care about polite. <laughs> No, just just kidding a bit. The first thing is nowadays we see that even the scores Nelson or I get seem to be like cute compared to what some of the kids in China do or in, in uh, all around the world do. I mean, there's an Italian student now. They are still setting new records, new records more or less every year. So the records I set back then, as I said, nowadays are already like, I don't know, 10, 20 percent below the world records uh, so it's uh, still increasing and not by me but by others um, so there seems to be quite a bit to it I still think that the major component the biggest component the major component is uh, amount of training time so if you just keep doing it you get more efficient in it so that's the biggest thing uh, and if people invest um, the whole year of their time maybe not having a job taking a year of, the, of their studies as you see with many of these Chinese I call them kids. I'm 35 now, so to me they look young. They're like around 20, most of them. So they might get a year off, even paid by their society in Mongolia, for example, or their college in China, to do nothing else in memory training all day long for for months and months. So of course that training time is way more than what I put in, and maybe I put more hours in than you did. So I think that's the biggest part of the explanation. If you ask me scientifically, what we did do is that we also did um, a, lot, a whole range of tests with people, of course, as as we had them anyway, we, for example, did find a pretty high average IQ on those memory athletes competing really well on the memory competitions. So uh, I hope people don't confuse that because it's really important. We did not find any effect of IQ on how much you improve by training. So uh, you don't have to be smart. You don't have to have a huge or high IQ to be able to use these techniques to achieve amazing things. And someone with a pretty low IQ, but the right technique and some training can easily beat the smartest person with no technique at all. I am 100% confident on that. But if you have like a group of a few thousand people, as we know have a few thousand people around the world to compete for memory competitions, and they all use the same techniques and they all train it, at the end, IQ might play a role if you finished first or 10th or 25th. So uh, it might be, again, explaining a tiny detail at the end why someone can memorize a deck of cards in 15 seconds. And I sit there and say, like, like how? It's like just how? I can do it in 30 seconds. And everyone else says, how? How is that possible? <laughs> so uh, 
to me, it's I know they use more or less the same techniques, but they're even still twice as fast as me. So this might be one of the explaining factors. But I still think the biggest thing is indeed the, the, the technique, as you said. If people encode two cards into one image and really practice these images well, that they really know them instantly, yeah, at the end, you need half the time of someone who has one image per card. Because at the end, images are much easier for our brains than cards, but the brain still has to store these. So reduce that from 52 to 26. That's a massive gain, but it like exponentially increases your training time. Instead of 52 images you need to prepare, you have 2,704 images to prepare, which is huge, has absolutely no beneficial use at all. It's just for competing in memory sports. Um, so it might not be smart at the end doing that. If you could use all those hours, you need to do that for something more useful. <laughs> so uh, I think that's the biggest thing. The hours spent, the numbers of images you uh, have to encapsulate what you want to memorize. And then at the very, very end, something like IQ, something like what we call processing speed, it's something you can measure with some tasks, does play a role. Then we did indeed see, I cannot, of course, give any scores of individuals, but in those people who were not just among the best 50 in the world, included in our study, but actually winning world championships, they were extremely fast in these processing speed tasks as well. Wow. So, and uh, that does that does make a lot of sense to me that if you have all of these people competing in a memory tournament and we're all using the same systems, you know, maybe there is a little bit of difference there, but I, I'm so glad that you said as far as the IQ goes, but I'm so glad that you said that the, that any person using these systems can see massive increases and in, in massive gains because I, I genuinely believe that, you know, and maybe one of the reasons the people, some of the people in the memory tournaments have, a higher IQ because it is a mental sport. And so they're naturally drawn to it. They're naturally attracted to it. Uh, the, the sport of memory. Um, and I also want you to tell us that your, your website. Find me uh, on LinkedIn if you're looking at professional connection. On Facebook if you also want to have occasional pictures of my kids. And you can reach out to me on either of these platforms. And my webpage is borisconrad.com. So Boris, like in Boris Johnson, it's not the most uh, favorable image for me, but I think it's the most famous person with the name at the moment. So Boris, like Boris Johnson, and then Conrad, that's a K, K-O-N-R-A-D, borisconrad.com. That's my English language web page. 